What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to dive into my top five lures for beginner anglers. This is not meaning it's only for beginner anglers, it just means these are five that you have to know how to fish or are baits that just generate a lot of bites and you, you know, maybe those are the first five you need to learn how to fish um, before moving on to another couple of different baits. Now this is all dependent on what area of the country you live in. And what your water really looks like, you know, is it muddy water? Is it clear, you know, really, really clean water, highland reservoirs, lowland reservoirs, grass lakes. There's a lot of variables in this, but I try to pick five lures that I feel like will catch a bass all over the country, no matter where you're at. So let's dive into it right now. Let's go. We're here in Mexico. We are in the Dominican Republic. So I'm going to tell you a couple of different tips that have helped me over the years. Okay, so one thing that I always am looking at is is lures that I can't leave home without. That's sort of how I looked at this deal. Is 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 even though this is you know I, if this is your first time just trying to learn to get a um, understanding of maybe some lures that you need to select when you go to your local tackle shop or local academy, or if this is something that you're just trying to be a better angler and you've been fishing for 20 years. Um, these lures are proven. That is the key. Proven fish catching lures and techniques that have caught them for years or have been one of the, the lures that are techniques that have caught them recently and, and really proven to be one of the best. Um, so as I sort of picked these out, I sort of thought of a lot of different things. Um, you know, obviously fish catching ability. Um, number two was looking at it if it was a weedless or was very much so a hang, you know, bait that you could hang up very easily. Um, and then, you know, the effectiveness, effectiveness of the lure, the effectiveness of the lure. So that's sort of the way I, I the, the, the way I fit, I sort of try to figure this out. Um, the number one lure for me um, would be to learn uh, for a beginner and, and really anyone for that matter is a wacky worm. Okay, a wacky worm, spinning rod technique typically, so using a seven foot medium action rod. Um, spinning rods catch a lot of big fish. This is a great technique when you're fishing around ponds, a great technique to fish around the spawning fish. Um, it's a slower following stick worm, so that bait's sort of swaying down through there. Now, I do typically put on either an O-ring or this is actually a VMC crossover ring. So the reason I do that is you don't want, at the end of the day, you buy a bag of, of worms. You don't want to be flinging them off non-stop. I mean, if I didn't have that crossover ring or, or an O-ring, I would have to hook this little hook right here in the center of the worm. And typically, um, no matter what, uh, no matter what particular brand of plastic you're using, um, you're gonna have an issue with ripping that plastic and losing your worm, okay? That happens a lot. So, so save you a little bit of money. Um, definitely go with the O-ring. And um, as far as hook goes, I like a VMC size number two Nico hook. It's a really good one to start with. So if you're trying to find a quality hook, but you can use like, even if you have um, just like a worm hook, like a, like a one-aught worm hook, um, you know, and that's all you really have, or a two-aught or something like that, you can use that on this technique, at least to get by. Um, so, don't, you don't always have to have the specific hook for it, but if you have a pre if a preference was, was available and you could pick whatever you wanted, uh, that BMC Nico hook, size number two is my, is my favorite. So number one would be a stick worm type bait. Um, number two I'm gonna roll with is going to be a half ounce spinner bait. Um, this is actually a three quarter, but this a white half ounce spinnerbait catches fish all over the country. Clean water, dirty water, spotted bass, large mouth, small mouth, it does not really matter. It just generates bites. And typically, um, springtime is a great time to go fishing, but it also does really well. They all, bass are always eating some type of forage. Um, you can make it look like, a, you know, I, I've caught a lot of, I've caught a lot of really nice bass up north in, in some northern waters on a spinnerbait. Um, large mouth and there's really no shad in those bodies of water. Some of those places that I've caught them. So it's just a fish catching lure in clear water, dirty water. Typically in the springtime when there's some rain, this gets a lot of bites. And the reason why I picked this, and I went back and forth because I wanted to pick one of the two. Either I was gonna pick a bait called a chatterbait or a vibrating jig or the spinnerbait right here. And the reason I picked a spinnerbait instead was because the 
the value of spinnerbait is, is there is this bend up here. Now you're gonna tie your, you tie your knot up the top of here. You can Google that, it's pretty simple. If you don't, understand, if you don't know that one. Um, but it, it ultimately deflects off a cover really well. So you're gonna have a piece of wood and it's gonna come off there. It's not gonna get hung up nearly as badly um, as a vibrating jig or a chatterbait. So, you know, that's why I selected it. Another great bait is a vibrating jig. So if you're in open water, so if you're in an area where it's open water, a lot of grass, and you don't have to worry about getting hung up, you might look at adding a vibrating jig or a chatterbait to your arsenal. But if I only could pick one for a beginner angler, that spinnerbait is just gonna do a better job of staying unhung and unstuck. And realistically, when you first start fishing, I mean, even now, that it always stinks when you're hung up. Like, yeah, come on, you're losing all your tackle, you're spending $10 or eight, six, seven, eight dollars on, on a spinnerbait or something and, and you lose it all the time. I mean, that's no fun. So spinnerbait would be my number two. Um, that's just a fish catcher. Uh, number three, number three came on the scene probably about, who about eight or nine years ago, a guy named Ned Cady uh, caught, uh, came coined the term Ned Rig, okay? And, and, and I remember back in the day thinking that a small profile bait just catches small fish. And, and boy, was I wrong. <laughs> it, it, it has become one of the baits that, whether you're fishing um, your local tournament, whether you're a beginner angler, or you're fishing professionally, fishing against the top anglers in the world, you better have a Ned Rig in your boat. And, and what a Ned Rig is, basically, originally, Ned himself would take a, a, a stick worm type bait like this and cut it down to just a little third of a, of a stick worm, okay? So that was what he would call a Ned Rig. And then he would take a jig head, sorry, Paul. This is a 16th. And he was one that really liked the lighter, lighter, you know, jig heads. And he would stick that guy on there and he would keep it exposed. Now, this is the, the, this is the thing about an Ned Rig, and that's, he would just throw that thing around. Now, I didn't rig it the straightest, so you guys can tell that. I, I might have to rig him a little bit straighter next time. It's not bad if I let him go down a little bit. Um, but that, that is basically, it's a mushroom head that bounces around rocks really good in creeks and rivers. Um, not a, really the best technique to really throw in very heavy cover, okay? So this is not a bait that I'm gonna throw in the middle of some trees, because you have that pointed exposed hook, you're gonna get hung up every time and it's, it's not gonna be a whole lot of fun. You're gonna break off all your dead rigs and you're gonna say, that was a stupid suggestion, Jacob. <laughs> but that is what I, I, I look at. I like that a lot. I like the bait a lot. The colors wise, green pumpkins, um, you can go with some other, you know, different colors, but green pumpkins are always a standby if you're gonna get one color Ned style bait. And now since, um, that it came out. Now there's there's Ned style baits all over the place. It's basically just already um, this one's more of that that uh, Aztec deal, and, and it and it's like more of a June bug color. Typically, as far as what I'm going to throw this on, I'm gonna throw this on a spinning rod. I'm gonna throw this on eight ten pound line. Um, you can throw fluorocarbon. You can throw monofilament. You can throw braided line with a fluorocarbon leader. Um, so there's a lot of options for that, but a Ned Rig, it just gets bit. And I, 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 whether you're fishing for smallmouth, largemouth, or spotted bass, it just gets a lot of bites. So Ned Rig would be my, my um, would be definitely up there. As far as jigs, jig head size, a 16th would probably be one. So it's a VMC Ned Jig. 16th is probably a, a good standard size if you're trying to fish five foot or shallower. You can bump up to an eighth, but a 16th is probably a good starting size for you if you're just getting into the game. Okay, so we went through a Ned Rig, we went through a spinnerbait, we went through a worm. All right, next on my list, you need to have something you can chunk in one. And a crankbait is a fish catcher. This guy right here is a square bill. Hence the term I'll show you real quick here. It's the BX Sprat from Rapala. There's a lot of great square bells out there on the market and the reason they get their name is obviously the bill of the bait is square. Um, the reason for that is, is typically these baits are a little bit more buoyant and a little, they deflect off of cover better. Um, so again, a bait that, it's a rattling bait, you, you cast, you wind it. Um, now I'm not gonna say to throw this in all the trees, but if you accidentally, or you bump a stump, or you bump around some trees, you're going to have a lot better chance of getting this lure out of those situations, and 
you're gonna generate more bites because of it. Because a lot of times when a crankbait bumps something on the bottom or deflects off of cover, that is when you generate a bite. Um, and that's why I picked this little bait right here. There's a lot of different sizes. There's small ones, you know, little small square bills. There's big giant square bills. But something about, I wanna say this is right at about two inches. Let's see what it says. Two and a half inches long. Um, two to two and a half inches long crankbait wise of the square build for me personally, that's one to go to um, and you can get bit a lot of different places. So I think that that's, this is, um, this one right here is a, a good one. This is a BX Brat and it runs about five feet deep. So colors wise, black chartreuse. Um, this is more of like a flashy chartreuse. If the water stain, more of your black white shad patterns, you can go with bluegill colors and you can go with like translucent colors. But really, I'm gonna say shad overall, day in and day out, is gonna get, if your water's dirtier, go with your chartreuse and whites, or your chartreuse and black. Um, if your water's a little bit cleaner, go with your more natural colors, and, and you're gonna be pretty well off. Okay, so that is number four. What is my last one for everyone out there? Um, it's so hard, because I, I have so many favorite lures that I would love to pick for this final one, but this is one that just, just always has put a lot of fish in my boat. And since I started bass fishing, and that is a buzz bait, okay? A buzz bait gets its name by that noise it makes. Now, this little dude right here, absolutely catching them. The thing about this is, you know, it typically comes standard with just basically a blade, a head, and a skirt, and your hook that's already attached to it. I typically will put a trailer on my buzz bait of some sort of plastic. This is a little, these are both little crawls right here, matching sort of the, matching sort of the theme. It's a black one with a little bit more of like a June buggy green pumpkin one. And this is more of a white translucent buzz bait with that more of a translucent, you know, a white sort of crawl. Um, the reason I do that is I feel like the fish hold on to the buzz bait better, but this is basically, you're casting that buzz bait out, you're reeling it in, um, you're keeping it on top of the water. This is a top water bait. So if your bait is going below the surface and you're reeling it slow, nothing can't catch one like that but your blade is turning and that blade is catching water and throwing water above the surface looking like a, fl a fleeing bait fish, a fleeing bluegill of some sort. And the bass can't, number one, they can't hear that. They can't stand the sound, but they also just come up there and some of the most aggressive bites I've ever seen have come from a buzz bait. Um, and it just generates a lot of big fish. So uh, it's something that I've, I've thrown a lot. It's something that I've caught a lot of fish. And this, this one right here is actually an accent buzz bait. It's a small company. Um, that started uh, a long time ago. Actually, I was really good. I'm really good friends with the, um, the owners. Um, but they they made a really good quality product. And um, so anyway, there's a lot of great buzzwords out there though. But this is one I throw. Um, it's my signature series, of course. Um, and that's the one I just I like. Buzz baits are always a lot of fun. But make sure you keep them up out on the surface. Make sure you hear that chirping. Um, you can do a couple of different things with. Um, actually like, you know, adjusting the sound of them a little bit. And, and there's actually a video on the channel if you guys search, you know, buzz baits and more, if you wanna know more about buzz baits, you can check that one out on the channel. We have, a, you know, a couple different things of how to tweak them, all those things that like go more in depth on buzz bait fishing. So that would be my number, number five, my top five right there. Hey, look, this is the thing. The last rule is just have fun, okay? Um, go to places that you can catch some fish, don't, don't make it too hard on yourself. There's days you're gonna get skunked, there's days you're gonna catch them all. Um, but at the end of the day, those are five lures catch fish all over the country. Um, and and there's, a lot of, there's a lot to be learned and there's a lot to learn about fishing in general, bass fishing, fishing in general. Um, don't try to learn it all in one night. Trust me, take one technique at a time. So if you, wanted, if you have one particular technique that, um, that you really wanna learn better, um, wait for that water to warm up a little bit. Typically when colder weather, it's a little bit harder to generate a bite as a beginner angler. So wait for it to warm up just a little bit and uh, take those techniques out there and try to generate a few bites. Try to get a little confidence in it. Confidence is everything in fishing, okay? And if you don't have confidence in the lure that you're throwing, it might be time to switch. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Learned a few things in this video. And if you don't already subscribe to the channel, make sure to do so right now. Um, we really appreciate all you all following along and all of the support that we get day in and day out. We will see you out on the lake. Wow.